My name is Nighthawk. Some call me Nighthawk. Some call me Whitehawk. The reason being is because I have a tattoo, I guess. That says Nighthawk and Whitehawk. Some people call me other things because I have a tattoo on my chest. They call the two rampant minds. Like that. And we had a, a land. I come from a hamlet of Hain. If you find out the old max, it was called Hamer. What I'm hoping to do, I'm going to read some things. I hope you can bear with me. I'm a fugitive. I've had several attempts in my life because of what I've said. So I've told, I've been told by people, I, I may not, I may not. I'll see how this goes. I'm making this up as I go along because I'm dyslexic. So I have to try and get my message out because other people write things for me and we send them off. Now this information I'm going to read has been sent to people like, <coughs> well, the police, the federal police, Interpol. It was sent then to politicians, state and federal. Then it was sent to the Governor General, Michael Miskins. The Attorney General, may I say, who is the highest holding officer in the land, who, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is the King's Attorney and is able to put warrants on people who have land and uh, in England. <coughs> That's where I come from. I'm in exile. Here. That can all be verified and checked out. I've had some very, very difficult times, and, very, and some people have done some very, very naughty things. But there comes a time when, even though I have signed documents, and may I say, these are very important numbers. I shall give some more very important numbers to verify who I am. <coughs> I was brought to this island by a lady called Nadia Polnick. There's only one family called Paul Nick in Australia, so she can be verified. <clears throat> this letter was sent. I also, this is all sent. Other letters have been sent. Uh, registered mail and signed by JPs. And I had my blood on there and fingerprint. And just to verify that I am who I am. I'm not just some nutcase wearing a $2 mask. I wear a mask for a number of reasons. I was the court jester at Bentley Protest and they got me off the internet there. I did have a web page called Nighthawk and they removed that one called Facebook. Nighthawk. Whitehawk. Facebook. It's been removed. I have some YouTubes, Alan Hamer, and they seem to get removed or cut short and made look like I'm a fool. That's okay, I can handle all that. I even had Red Dog the God. That's G O A T, not Red Dog the God, but God. Sorry about the accent. I come from North of England where we talk a bit funny. And my dad and his brother used to talk like Bill and Ben. Yeah, a bit of cool bum. Yeah, that type of stuff. So I've had to relearn <coughs> and try and speak English. I think uh, an English man is, is uh, I think the dictionary said it's one who opposes the empire. I can't remember now, but I'll, anyway. This is very important because it was sent, these letters have been sent to people like Quentin Bryce. For those who don't know who Quentin Bryce is, let me allude to who she was before she resigned after getting a letter. <coughs> she held a badge that claimed that she was the Attorney General of Australia, acting as a ambassador for the Queen, of all people. And, and people would notice if they went back on to March, remember when things went from the government to knights and people got knighted and now we've got Sir Cosgrove, he's a knight, that's right, 
is not been knighted. Maritime Admiralty Law that we were being controlled by left. After Quinton Bryce got this letter, she was the commander in chief of the Navy. And she said goodbye. She didn't want to respond to this. <clears throat> well, not this one, but I sent a lot, lot better one. This was sent on the hop, so to speak. I was coming down from Lismore on my way to, I guess, where I am now on a rock off the island of Australia. PTY is right there. Look it up. England, small capital E is England, PTY today traded in New South Wales. It's a corporation. <clears throat> I have exposed murders from the, at the highest degree. I've been at the murder site, I know who killed who and who did what and one thing and I had all the regional numbers and, and um, telephone numbers that was, and all that type of stuff. I've been gathering information for some years. So I knew one day, as I said to my foes, may I say, at National Security, I said one day I will find out who killed who, and I will share it from the hilltops. That's what I said I would do. Well, you've got to be careful what you say sometimes. But anyway, this is the letter that was sent to regarding the murder. Well, there's several men that I'm trying to expose, but this young lady is called Polly Wren. She was married to this man, Lloyd Rennie. Those who don't know Lloyd Rennie, he was the chief, chief, Queen's Council Prosecutor in West Australia. Very hard position. The Supreme Court in West Australia. His wife Cory was a registrar or registrar at the Supreme Court in West Australia. And maybe had a little bit to do with probate office, something I didn't know much about, but I unfortunately did find out quite a bit when I signed affidavits to get information, which uh, <coughs> there wasn't forthcoming. And they told me that the registrar, or, or, not E, or, or, uh, was not going to hand them over to me. Well, I thought he was trying to conceal something. That's another story. On the way to the rock that I'm now residing on, and we've claimed sovereignty, may I say, the Roman jury, people have taken me in and gave me a great position of great honour and privilege, may I say. I'm the gatekeeper to Stargate Heaven, of all places. Heaven's gates. This letter was also sent to Mr. Rainey's team of lawyers, this man here, and a whole pile of other lawyers, and it was sent to Selmark. It was also sent to <coughs> the Commissioner of the Police, this man here, Carl Callahan. That's Cory Rainey's body being removed at night time in a bag. Very good reason for that. Mr. Carl Callahan without the hat. He's got some skeletons in his cupboard. Right there. Yes. <clears throat> what I'm going to read you might shock you to think that all this evidence, all this information, and a lot, lot more, may I add, has been given to the powers that be, which would have been handed to the royal family and uh, SR14. Now, those who don't know SR14 is. It's paid by the taxpayers, and it's a royal protection unit to protect the royals. Hmm. Now, I've always believed for a long, long time, and I still do believe, that nobody is above the law. If you kill somebody maliciously, intentionally, you are guilty of killing a person. And you need to be accountable. And restitution needs to be paid, so to speak. Great word, restitution. <coughs> I can go through all the phone numbers and all the people we sent these to, but this is what's been sent. And I shall read after the response I got back. And that's why I'm hiding on sovereign land, seeking refuge. First of all, anyone like to Google my name, my name, my real name, or 
the name on a birth certificate. I have three. The last one I got, uh, a man by the name of Matthew Harvey, who was very good at forgery, I guess, or had some assistance to, he became, without my knowledge of consent, my enduring power of attorney. And he was able to apply for my passport, not my passport, my birth certificate from England, original one, which <clears throat> after three months of hiding from this man, a woman by the name of Tegan Goody said I needed to meet him. I said, I don't want to meet him. I believe he means me harm because he had my platinum, platinum American Express card. Him and a friend, and a friend called John, uh, Paul Forrest and a few others. Long story. Like I said, I don't want to get too sidetracked here. Okay, this is a letter that was sent. I shall give it the days later. But it was sent from the Mildura Library. And I have all the DACs and the receipt numbers and all that type of stuff. And we got confirmation back. <clears throat> to whom it may concern. My name is Nadia Polnick. She's the lady I'm travelling with at that point in time. I only travelled for four months. Came to the island and then after four days she left. <clears throat> Said I would be safe here. My name is Nadia Polnick. I am a registered nurse with South Australia. For the last two months, by the time we parted through four months, I have been travelling throughout northern New South Wales with a man by the name of Alan Hamer. That was my name on my birth certificate, but I may have it, but it wasn't signed by the registrar. I had crowns embossed in the paperwork with the letters G-I-R. G-R-R. He is a dyslexic man and has asked me to write the following letter on his behalf. Although traumatised, and I still am, I believe this man is honourable and truthful in what he is saying. We live fairly closely, so he, he was able to assess me. I used to be a medic in the army. I've assessed myself. I said, I, I know I'm traumatised. Anybody would be. Most people wouldn't have got this far. And in fact, I told the white of more than one occasion. I thank God that it was me and nobody else has gone through this. Alan believes that the reason Corey Ranny, Corey Ranny, <coughs> this lady here, who was murdered, And the people who murdered her have never been apprehended. Alan believes that the reason Corey Rainey's uh, murder is connected to a massive amount of fraud. Yes, to do with these tax law numbers. Uh, which involves people who hold very powerful positions in national security. Unfortunately for me, my sister-in-law works for national security. Jennifer Shirley Stokes, my brother-in-law, uh, 30 years customs investigator, Robert Harry Wales, and my and his son, Mark Wales, works for National Security at Canberra. That's just the start. And they've got some really interesting friends. Anyway, <coughs> involve, uh, the fraud which involves very, very powerful people in National Security and in the court system. He believes Corrie's discovery, discovered documents at the Supreme Court and Private Office which put her life in jeopardy. <clears throat> I got a phone call. The person didn't identify themselves. They just wanted to know who I was. And I said, yes, I'm Alan Hamer. And yes, my date of birth is 26 or 756. Did they say who I, did they not ask me, did I know who I was? I said, I just told you who I was, basically. And um, they sent me some documents. Where the documents came from, yeah, I'm not quite sure, but I imagine they came from the probate office or the Supreme Court. I have written here some of Alan's story, only some of it, and various numbers and accounts and phone numbers he believes is connected. Connect the dots. Alan has been in hiding for several years. Several means more than three. Now, and is in fear of his life. I've got good reason to be. He has made many attempts to contact Mr. Rainey, the police, on various and other various government officials, but unfortunately, he has come across many obstacles. A man called Greg Hales told me I was stonewalled. I didn't know what stonewall was till recently. A white hawk was looking up what stones and difference between stones and rocks and we found that stonewalling is something the parliament does. It stops and hinders and blocks information getting through. 
I'd like to know who writes these policies, honestly. He believes his sister-in-law, Jennifer Stokes, also Wales, and she's got alias AKA names, who works for National Security, is and, and I only said that because she bragged that she lectured on and global terrorism and taught lessons at the United Nations. Security is a key player and has been able to put up roadblocks, <laughs> Stone Wolf, in making an official police report. I can go to the police report. In fact, come to what think of it, we gave this document, what I'm reading now, to a police officer on this island. I forgot what his name is at the moment. We handed it to him. We later found out that it went to his, I assume it went to his sergeant, that's the chain of command, so it works, who then contacted the superintendent on the mainland. And then it came back and the documents got put back on my doorstep. Gerard, I think his name was. Yeah. <coughs> the place of avoiding like the plague since. That's why I'm a good person to have a gatekeeper. They don't want to come here. Anyway, there has there has been documents in a PDF file that turned up on, on my own computer. Just popped up on Nadia's computer one day. Regarding Alan. So I fear that every email and phone call I make is being monitored. I, all, I am also starting to fear for my own safety given the magnitude of this case. That's correct. She could not believe when we sent off this information to all the people we did. And I'll read you the response we got back when I finished the letter. I believe the father said, you'd better keep well away from this young fella. <coughs> I do sincerely hope that this letter gets through to Mr. Rainey and an, investiga and an investigation can get underway as soon as possible. I would like to see my friend, Alan, have the opportunity to come out of hiding and be able to go to Perth and justice be served for those who have committed these crimes. Sincerely, sincere, Nadia. Sincerely, Nadia. This has all been sent off. And that's the first page of it. <clears throat> okay, I'll put that page one. 